Good morning. Welcome to worship at Lawrenceville First Christian Church on this first Sunday of Advent. Today we begin the season of waiting and preparing for the birth of the Christ child. So whether you're joining us in the here in the sanctuary, whether you're joining us online, or whether you're watching this service later in the week, it's wonderful to have the opportunity to gather together to worship God. As we enter into Advent, I invite Reverend Teresa and her mom, Connie, to come forward to light the candle of hope on our Advent wreath. As they come forward, we will sing verse 1 of One Candle is Lit. You may remain seating, seated as we sing. Today marks the beginning of the Advent, which is the period of preparation to help Christians prepare for the anniversary of the birth of the Christ child. The first Advent candle represents hope, and we light the candle of hope. Hear these words from Luke chapter 12, verse 37. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds alert when he comes. As Christians, we are called to be con contemplative, to be people who see the coming of God. The day of the Lord is also coming. It is not a coming that will happen in some distant future, but a coming here and now among us. The Lord's coming is an ongoing event around us, between us and within us. And knowing this truth fills us with hope. To become contemplative means to take off the blindfolds that prevent us from seeing the coming of God in Jesus in the midst of our world and prevent us from hearing his invitation to purify our hearts so that we might indeed recognize him as our Lord. Let us pray. God, you call us always and everywhere into your revealing light. Help us to see you, to know you, to love you, and to imitate you in our lives. Fill us with hope in this time of waiting. Amen. And now as we move into worship filled with hope, let us stand and share in the responsive call to worship using the words printed on the screens. Please stand as you are able. Awake, people of God, and stay alert for Christ's coming. Grace to you and peace from God who sent Jesus to us. Make, Make your, your ways known to us, O God. God. Show, Show us once more your awesome presence. We are all God's people. No one is excluded. Come together as God's family for worship and prayer. Let, Let the, the mountains awake before you, you mighty, mighty God. God. Let the nations tremble in awe and reverence. Praise the one who grants us the gift of life. Give thanks for God's continuing faithfulness. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God is true for all times and places.
As we prepare for prayer on this Hope Sunday, we recognize that there are those connected to our community who need our continued prayer. We continue to pray for Elizabeth, Elizabeth Sloan's 91-year-old grandmother who's had COVID. We continue to pray for Connie Worrell's sister Pat, Teresa's aunt. We pray for Anna Harrison as she heals. We pray for Patricia Saturday as she has transitioned to a different living situation. And we pray for so many others in our congregation who have been dealing with illness. We also continue to pray for all those caught in the violence and humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Knowing that God is with us in this very room and hears both our spoken and our unspoken prayers, let us go to God in prayer now. Will you pray with me? God of all time, thank you for this particular time. Even as we acknowledge that we're challenged with threats around us and worries within, Today, we begin this new church year with you. Help us channel our energies and focus our hearts in this season of anticipation and active waiting for Jesus, the coming one. Gracious God, in the middle of worldwide turmoil, darkness descends and the people cry out, save us, Lord. Hear our cries and prepare the word which resides with God to come to us anew. Help us be ready for the coming of Jesus. Continue to transform us as we grow in faith. Break through the dark places in our lives and let the light of your love flood in that we may follow you more nearly. Merciful God, forgive us when we spend so much time looking for the scary things in life. Focus our attention on ways we can be of service to others. Forgive us when we seek the darkness of anger and fear and turn our backs on the light of hope and peace. Help us recognize and appreciate the many ways in which you enrich our lives as we celebrate the beginning of the season of Advent, the coming of the Holy One. Be with our families, friends, and neighbors who suffer from illness, sorrow, alienation, marginalization, abuse, or fear. Be with all those who find the holiday season challenging or stressful or lonely. Bring healing and peace to their lives and their souls. Be with our families, friends, and neighbors who are experiencing great joy and happiness. May their spirits rejoice in all these good moments and in your great gifts. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. Our scripture today is from Mark 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days, after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from four winds, from the farthest parts of the earth to the farthest parts of heaven. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches has already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when that time is. If it is like a man going to a far country, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to each his work, commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. In the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning. Least coming suddenly, he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Jeannie. Join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes, it's actually Happy New Church Year. We start a new lectionary for year B today, and if you think about it, it's not the January hoopla, it's not the toast that comes at midnight, it's not the balloons or the confetti, but it's still significant in the life of the church. Advent starts our year. Our new year starts in Advent, and our Advent season begins today. The season of anticipation, of waiting, of staying alert, and we don't want to miss a thing. Except our scripture this morning. I've always found it interesting for year B that our Advent season begins with an apocalyptic beginning. A scripture that talks about the times that will end, the end times. Now, I want to talk about the baby. I want to talk about Mary. I want to talk about the wise men. I want to talk about the gifts. I want to talk about the sparkle and the grandeur of the star that leads them to Bethlehem. I like the comfort of the manger, the sheep, the camel. I want the stable. And I want my mother-of-pearl nativity scene displayed. And on this, the first Sunday of Advent, the season when the church waits with anticipated hope for the coming, the coming of the Messiah, the lectionary sets before us a vision of the end times. It's a vision of celestial bodies fading to black, 
stars falling to the earth as the Son of Man rides in on a cloud together the faithful to himself. Today's reading from the Gospel of Mark is part of a passage scholars call the Little Apocalypse because it borrows elements from the Jewish Apocalypse text. Like other genre and readings and writings, this chapter describes a grand cosmic disturbance as the Lord comes in glory to right all wrong and restore creation. It details a dramatic revealing which, as it happens, is the root word apocalypse. For the Greek meaning is to uncover or to reveal. An apocalypse is an unveiling. In this key case, the unveiling of God. So in this little apocalypse of Mark, Jesus instructs his disciples to anticipate God's self-revolution, revelation. Keep awake, he tells them. Be vigilant, be alert. Sleep with one eye open. For the Messiah will come any day to usher in God's kingdom. Keep awake, Jesus tells them, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, at midnight, at the cock crow, or at dawn. Keep awake, all of you. On one level, this is what the parable Jesus tells in this passage is all about. Like the master of the house who will return at any moment, the Messiah will come at any unpredicted and unexpected hour. And when that happens, the very cosmos will announce his arrival. The scriptures tell us the sun will darken, the moon will not give off its light, and the stars will fall from heaven. On one level, the vision Jesus sets before his disciples is precisely the apocalyptic events we'd expect of the last days when the Messiah finally returns and ushers in God's reign. But as often the case in this gospel, Jesus is not speaking on only one level. There's more than just a parable here. That much becomes clear as the story unfolds. You see, in the next chapter of Mark's gospel, Jesus and his disciples gather at sundown to celebrate the Passover. And then Jesus leads them to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he repeats a phrase he's uttered only two days before. He says, keep awake, Jesus tells them. Keep awake. But this time, the disciples need not wait to see if the Master will come in the evening, at midnight, at cock crow or dawn. For the hour has come for the Son of Man to be revealed. And the unveiling Jesus describes in the little apocalypse comes to pass. Not in some future disastrous event, but surprisingly, no shocking, shockingly, in the imminent reality of Jesus' suffering and death. Great story for Advent, right? At the hours tick by, Jesus moves closer to the cross. He gathers with his disciples in the evening, Judas betrays him at midnight. Peter denies him at the cock crow. And Pilate sentenced him to death at dawn. And those who are awake, those who are watching for the evening, for the master, midnight or dawn, will see that the hour has come. God's apocalypse is at hand just not in the manner we expect. The moment when the sun fades to black and the sky grows dark is not when the Son of Man ride, rides in on the clouds, but when the Son of Man cries out from the Roman cross. It is not a grand exhibit of power and glory, but a pitiful display of weakness and defeat, at least that how it looks at the moment but not in reality. God's apocalypse bears no resemblance to the vision outlined in today's reading. 
And yet it still is unveiling, quite literally, in fact. The curtain hiding the holiest place is ripped from the top to the bottom. God's presence is revealed. According to Mark, this is the moment diligent disciples have watched and waited for. It has come not at the end of time, but on the cross, right there in some God-forsaken place on the outskirts of town, in a place no one would think to search for God. You see, God has come in the small, broken figure of Jesus on the cross. God is at work, rendering to pieces all that would separate us from God. This seems like an excellent message for Lent, for the season when we journey with Jesus towards Calvary, preparing ourselves with every step to comfort the cross. But what's it doing in Advent? Especially this Advent, when all we want to do is go to Bethlehem. We only wish to kneel before the manger, to cradle Jesus in our arms, and hold tightly to the hope, peace, joy, and love he brings. What does the apocalypse of God at the cross have to do with the advent of God's stable? Only this. That God has a habit of showing up when we're not on the lookout. When we're not waiting at the door, watching from dusk till dawn for the Master to come, God has a habit of surprising us and surprising us with good news. Just as God surprised an unwed teenager in a podunk town who, for all we know, was hanging out laundry when an angel appeared to her, just as God promised shepherds on the outskirts of Bethlehem who were watching their flocks, not watching the sky, God has a habit of coming in ways that the world would deem small and insignificant. In the dreams of a good man named Joseph, who wasn't expecting to be a father just yet. In the flutter of a child leaping in the woman's womb, announcing that the mother of God had come to visit in a tiny babe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger because there was no place for them at the inn. You see, God has a habit of showing up, a habit of revealing God's self in unexpected places and unexpected times. This was true in days of old, on the cross in Calvary, in a manger in Bethlehem, and this is true even now in Lawrenceville First Christian Church. We only need to keep awake and watch for God's saving presence to take shape before our eyes. And so perhaps, dear friends, our task this week is to invite people to look for Jesus in need of those around them, and to be awake for God's presence in response to those needs. For many of our folks, Advent has become a somewhat ambivalent season marked in equal measures by joyful anticipation and hectic, even pressured, preparation. Dinners, buying gifts, parties, cards, school holiday programs, and the list goes on. Each and all of it can be wonderful. Don't get me wrong. And yet, and all of it can become somewhat overwhelming. And so perhaps we might invite folks to have a short list. Rather, a list that's small, takes up half a page of paper, a list of a few things that will occupy your Advent, and then to think about how in each of those events and activities you might 
be attentive to the vulnerable, to the needs around them, and more honest and open about the, uh, your own needs that must receive the care of others. Perhaps in this way you will experience Jesus' coming and God's presence in our lives, even here, even now. In this way, discover, share, and actually participate in Jesus' advent among us all. Now, I take us back to the Advent wreath and the lighting that we did earlier this morning. So as we begin the Advent season, what are you hoping for? When you think about God coming to us in the flesh, what is your Advent hope? And what will you do about it? This Advent, my first season here with you, I'm hopeful. Even if I still expect snow, when the forecast calls for the usual Georgia weather at this season. I'm hopeful that Christ is continually born into our midst, continually reminding us that God is with us. I'm hopeful enough that I want to prepare my life and my heart again. Hopeful enough I want to ensure that I'm going in God's direction, not the wrong way. And hopefully, and hopeful enough, instead of staying awake passively, I will wait actively, working to carry out the good news right now, because my hope is built on the faith in God's promise, which never disappoints us. We're waiting. Yes, I don't deny that but with a thrill of hope in our hearts. Let's get to work while we wait. Amen. Our hymn of commitment is number 151, the first Noel, verses 1 and 2. If you will stand in singing, please, and if you would like to make Lawrenceville First Christian Church your home, please come forward or see Diane and I after the service. We'd love to welcome you into our community. Well, I was brought into the 21st century music scene by my wife, who signed up for Amazon Prime. (laughs) This was so she could order most of her Christmas gifts online, so 
uh, to avoid shopping uh, or shipping charges. So you can have Amazon Music play any song or artist or even music that sounds like an, uh, an artist song. And that's how I first heard the High Women. It's a super group of female country music songwriters uh, led by Brandi Carlisle. They're an eccentric group whose songs can be fairly irreverent to the country music genre. But one of their songs, which is about family and friends, speaks to me about this table and this house. The first two lines of the song goes, I want a house with a crowded table and a place by the fire for everyone. And it speaks to me of what God wants this table and this house to be. And not just for us, but for millions of people gathered around the world in community. In large cathedrals and small churches and even living rooms with a couple of people meeting in places where it's illegal. People gather around God's table to partake of this meal of bread and wine. In God's house here, people are welcome, invited in. We enter, leave our troubles by the door in God's hands and kick back on God's sofa in front of his fireplace. And indeed, there's a place by God's fire for everyone. This morning, as we partake of this meal, all are welcome to join in. Everyone is welcome together around God's crowded table. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, don't let us miss Jesus this Christmas season. May we simplify our lives and our activities so that we can focus on the celebration of his birth. We come to this table in adoration, praise, and thankfulness. Open our hearts and minds that we may hear the story anew. We thank you for the opportunity to come to your house to worship and the opportunity to take this communion freely each week. Lord, bless those who are hurting, hungry, sick, lost, those that are in danger or at war. Wrap your loving arms around this world and bring us peace. In your precious son's name we pray. Amen.
For I received from the Lord also what you had handed, handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. We come now to the time when we give thanks to God for our time, talents, and treasure, and when we commit to give back to God a small portion of the gifts God has given us. You have an opportunity to respond to God's grace through the morning offering. You can place your offering at the plate at the back of the sanctuary, give on the church website, or mail a check to the church. This morning we also celebrate First Sunday Food, a time when we celebrate and dedicate all of the food offerings brought to the church over the past month. May these gifts of food provide nourishment, comfort, and strength for those who need them most. As we celebrate and dedicate our financial and food gifts, let us stand and sing the doxology together. this opportunity to be awake, alert, adoring believers, acting out hope through our offerings. Help us to be generous people, not only today, but throughout the year to come. Wake us up from the December doldrums and end of your exhaustion, and empower our lives of hospitality and gracious generosity as we wait for the birth of the Christ child. Amen. We have a number of announcements today. Uh, Leadership Council meets this evening at 6 p.m. on Zoom. The Congregational Care and Connect team meets tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. The CWF-DWF meeting is Tuesday at 12.30 at Maryland's house. All ladies of the church are welcome. Please let Maryland know if you're coming if you haven't already. Our Advent Bible study continues this Wednesday at 6.30 on Zoom. We had a great crowd and a really good discussion this last week. We hope you'll join us. Whether or not you were able to join us last week, we hope you will join us. Next Sunday, we'll have a short congregational meeting after worship to approve the 2024 budget and elect new church leadership, so please plan to stay for that. Today's the last day to donate gift cards for Cedar Hill Elementary School families. Talk to Rod Baker. He is the one collecting those, but he'll also take them late. (laughs) So today is the last day, except that it's not. (laughs) Please help us publicize the live nativity. Uh, There are postcards on on the table in the gathering space. Please invite people. We want uh, lots of people to come and join us that night. Um, And we have sign-ups for people who want to be Sunday morning greeters from uh, beginning in January. I have a lovely sign-up list here, and there are no people on it yet. So we need people to be greeters. So talk to me after after church, or I'll leave the list out in the uh, gathering space as well. If you're interested in being a greeter, we need people to be greeters. Um, Next Sunday, December 10th from 5 to 7 p.m., there is an event called Hymns and Hops at uh, Monkey Wrench Brewing in Sewanee, and I know uh, Joey and Amanda and maybe some others are planning to go, so if that's something that interests you, you might might plan to attend. And also, uh, there is banana bread back on the table by the coffee, um, so please help yourself if you haven't already. We have several celebrations. Um, Barbara McElhannon, Clementine Jensen, Drew McElhannon, and Jen Ashby all had birthdays this week. And Andrew Jensen has a birthday today. So happy birthday to Andrew. 
And also, uh, Lee and Scott Britt's anniversary is on December 7th, so we wish them a happy anniversary. Any other announcements or celebrations that I've missed? Yeah, Julie. All right, so Brooks was, na was named Defensive Player of the Year for, his high for the region. So congratulations to him and to his, to his family and to his team. Any others? Any other announcements or good news? Stay awake. <laughs> Don't miss out. The Advent season is here. Go this week doing what God sends us to do in this season. Welcome others to the Christ child. Amen. Amen.